Hello everyone, Chris Assis here, and today it is a, a closure for the Boleo section. Um, we will be looking at technique, but uh, sort of technique that answers uh, really, really uh, common questions, uh, such as do my knees need to be together or separate when I'm doing a boleo? Uh, high boleos versus low boleos, uh, more nuevo style, more traditional. So we're going to be, going to be looking at these common questions from um, a technique and body mechanics scope. And um, we will also take the time to connect uh, the things that we discover uh, working on boleos with other very important elements in our tango practice, such as back steps. So with no further ado, here we go. I want you to imagine a shape with lots of curves and um, sort of a a ball with a little neck that goes into it. So that is our leg going inside our hip. And as you can imagine, any ball that moves inside a weirdly curved uh, shape, it wouldn't go straight. So if you just swing the leg the way I am doing here, acknowledging the shape of the hip and acknowledging how a curved uh, ball structure would move inside that shape, then you would have something like this. So slightly turn out as you swing forward and a slightly slight turn in as you swing back. And I hope you can see that. I try to make it as, as much obvious as possible. So when you swing forward your your toes and your knee will turn out a little bit. When you swing backwards your toes and your knee will uh, turn in a little bit. Now what's happening in the upper body? So especially if you want to go past a certain level you don't want to crank it up. You want to let the upper body go a little bit forward, almost working like a teeter-totter. So now if we're looking at the axis of the pelvis, imagining like actual, like a, a bond similar to a teeter-totter going through one hip and out the other, basically you want when something going back, something else going forward. And feel free to exaggerate here so you can feel where the limits of that movement are. So you want to not squeeze onto the muscle, not tense up, not pull at your lower back uh, to get that leg higher. You want to avoid these things. So you want to use the body, move the body in a position where that allows you to bring the leg higher. And you start building this relationship with the leg. So now putting it all together in a back boleo. So if you start here, and we're facing forward, ta-da, you turn a little bit and here you have your boleo. And this is to answer whether your knees need to be together or separate, whether your knees need to be aligned one next to the other or one behind the other, and um, whether you need to arch the body um, or keep it straight up. So, it all depends, and you're going to see me showing different versions of it. So for now, I'm keeping things high. I'm just using, staying at the same level of my, you know, for swing. Um, but as you will see, I'll be going lower and lower, adjusting, for example here, how much the body will go forward. So these two... As you can see here, I don't need to adjust at all because I'm not lifting the leg. However, my knees are still working separately, um, in a separated position, let's put it that way. And this can transition actually to your step. Just saying. Just putting that out there. It's going to lead us to something. And you try the same thing on the other side. So 
if your knees end up together and your if you're not kicking as high and you turn the body, your knees will end up touching, of course. So it is all relative. That's what I want to say. And I want you I want to encourage you to find what feels good for your hips so you f- shouldn't be feeling any pinching inside around the hip in the glute or in the lower back so no pinching no muscle getting squeezed or tensed or pushed or pulled and then on the second level to decide how high you want to go so if you stay low your body will not go that much forward if you go higher as you could see, my body would go higher. And that's how these common uh, boleo issues are um, can be answered. And then you just go for the boleo right away. Just choose whichever one you like. Use the fro- forward swing just to get you into the uh, proper biomechanically speaking position. And then play with the different positions and the different levels of the leg like I'm doing here just so you can have a feeling of where you need to be to feel good. So as we saw in our last video, boleos are basically a fancy way to change your direction on a pivot. So you can understand that there is a strong relationship between the ocho and the boleo. So you were going back like I'm going here and suddenly you change your mind and you're turning in the opposite direction. That creates a boleo. So the placement of the leg is actually quite similar. So try to find this smooth, no muscle pinching position in your steps and in your boleos when you're doing your ochos. Practice your back ochos and boleos a couple of times, aiming for that freedom of, uh, free of pinching movement, let's put it that way. So a movement that acknowledges the shape of the hip and the shape of the femur, um, and how they two move around each other in your ochos and your boleos. So forward boleos work exactly in the same way. Uh, they are two, a uh, change of direction on a pivot, only we were going forward and as we switched backwards. So how does this happen? If we basically keep the leg where it is, and we use our body and the base leg to create that torsion. You get the boleo. So I'm going to turn it this way so you can actually see it. You start with the same movement, following the curves of the hip, following the ball shape of the femur. When you feel secure and settled and no pinching in the muscle and the psoas, you use the upper body and and the base leg to swing that leg across. And you can see that my leg is like just flicking around. It's not going to look as beautiful as you would want it to look on the dance floor, but it's practice, right? So you're there, you swing across, swing it across, and just let your leg dangle around. And you do the same thing on the other side. So it's really aiming for freedom and um, not bringing extra muscle in when we don't need to. And feel free, of course, to keep things lower 
it works exactly in the same way. So in the forward and the back polos, the leg basically is in the exact same position as when we're doing our swing, only our body has changed. So if you're just started with that swing exercise that we've been doing and you reorient the body, you will create a boleo. If you don't and you go straight forward or back, you have a step. Let's see how we can put them all together. Uh, again, just touching base and reviewing. Start with a swing. Find the right position that works best for you. It might be higher. It might be lower. Don't adjust the leg like I'm doing here. Adjust the body like so. So the body is the one that will determine uh, and, then, and that will help you actually reach higher levels of a kick. Similarly here, in the forward boleos, the leg basically stays the same and it is below, it is the twist of the body that creates that flicking motion from the knee down. But inside the hip, there's not really much of a swing. So again, go from back ochos to forward ochos, finding the right place for you. It might be lower, it might be higher from what I'm doing. Just find the one that works best for you. But don't focus on the boleo itself. You might never use it on the dance floor. Focus on how the hip feels, how your lower back feels. And let that inform your steps here in your back ochos. It is exactly the same action, only the leg doesn't flick. We're not changing direction, so there's no flick. There's no reason for a flick. But where you step, it is very much similar to where you're kicking. And so, a cool down and, uh, you know, absorbing of information moment. I'm starting from that same action only. I'm not kicking off the floor. Instead, I'm keeping the foot on the floor and I'm using it to trace my walk. So, respecting the hip axis means a slight turnout as you step forward and a slight turn in as you step backwards and that of course you can see it here if you can see how my heel moves how that you know the thunder of Nike moves <laughs> around the edge of my shoe um, you can see the slight turn in it's slight, and I'm exaggerating here a little bit so you can see it a little bit better um, but this is what it means to step backwards and forwards, respecting the axis of the hip joint. Every joint has a three-dimensional axis. So I want you to start thinking a little bit about this, how you're moving in an X, Y, Z um, type of, around an X, Y, Z type of axis, and how you can be respectful of the shapes that your body has and bring those shapes out onto the dance floor. This can be quite fascinating, how feeling, how you can trace a similar, um, similar hip jointy shape, right, in, um, on the dance floor through your steps. So 
Try it out. Do the flicks. Let those flicks inform your steps. And most of all, have fun and look for comfort because everyone's hips are just oh so slightly different. And send me questions. I'd love to hear back from you.